numbers can have cool shapes. Like this is the number six in a weird way, and this is the number nine in a weird way, and this is kind of the number 12. And today in combo class for a bonus lesson, I wanna show you something I was doing on a live stream here the other day, which is figuring out what these representations of these numbers tell us. Now, to be more technical, this is the number six in that if this is a coordinate plane where each of these are called one unit apart, these are the coordinates that are an exact grid point and its x coordinate and y coordinate multiplies to six. Like here we have six times one, and there's another version of that one times six or six times one, and there's two times three and three times two. And here we have negative versions of both because negative three times negative two will also get us that number. But these shapes wouldn't have anything in that quadrant or that quadrant because a negative times a positive won't get us these positive results. These parts will all be symmetrical though. Like we can see here that whatever we get on the negative web for a shape will be a symmetrical version of what we get on the positive web. And also whatever we get on either web is gonna have some symmetry down the line y equals x, which goes there. And if y equals x was like a mirror, we can see some more symmetry where these are a flip of that. And that's because two times three is the same as three times two, and one times six is the same as six times one. Now, what would it tell us if something sits on that line, like nine there? Well, nine has one on the line, and if we count how many nine has, that one on the line makes it have a total of an odd number of dots, whereas one that wasn't on the line for any would have everything symmetrical in a way that it would have an even number of total appearances. And if we look at the amount of appearances that are just in this positive quadrant, or the total amount cut in half, that's the amount of factors these numbers have. Because these are the six ways multiplicatively we could split six into, into piles of six, into piles of one, piles of two, or piles of three, and get whole numbers. And so these dots also tell us about the factors. If we looked at just the x coordinates of where each dot lands, we get one, two, three, six, the factors. Same if we looked at the y coordinate instead, one, two, three, six. And with the ones that have an odd number of dots, that means they have an odd number of factors, and it's true. Numbers that have an odd number of factors are the ones that have a special trait, which is being a perfect square. Because to be on that line, you need something that's multiplied by itself. And so if you have an odd number of dots in your appearance here, or in other words, if you have dots lying on this y equals x line when we play this game, that means you are a perfect square. Now, what else could we learn about these? With factors, it's interesting to try plotting numbers with more factors, like here is a version of what 60 might look like at a certain scale. And we see that numbers that are super composite, like 60, are gonna have a bunch of dots. Whereas if I did this with a prime number, I would only get two dots in the positive quadrant, one times it and it times one, and two more mirror ones down in the negative land. And 60, in fact, is a highly composite number, which means it'll have more dots when we play this game than any smaller number. And you may notice that in addition to telling us about factors, these seem to trace out some kind of curve-like shapes. All of these have curve-like ones. And here's an example of 12. Uh, some of the dots kind of veered off, so that would actually be a little further on those ones, but we wanted to tuck them in. And what's going on with these curvy shapes? Well, if I try and trace out what lines it looks like are happening here, it's sort of like... Uh, some sort of curve like that seems to be happening. And it's true that right here we're looking at all of the coordinates where x times y equals 12, 
And if I just said, in general, what are all the points that don't have to land on an exact grid point where x times y was 12, I would get these whole lines. And if we simplify this a little, in a form you may see equations more often in, where we just have y on one side, by dividing each side by x, that gets rid of that and puts the x down there. And these are the graphs, essentially, of y equals 12 over x. Similarly, these would be some graphs of y equals 60 over x. And Now, similar ones to these appeared in a short video I made talking about how trying to divide by zero has some relationship to shapes like this. And that's because if I decided to say y equals 1 over x, what if x is being zero? What does y become? Well, y equals 1 over x is going to be similar to these y equals 60 over x's or y equals 12 over x's. It's going to have these swoopy shapes. And if we tried to see what it makes sense to plug zero in there, we could see that coming from the positive direction, it's veering toward infinity. But that's not the case coming from the negative direction. It's veering toward negative infinity. So it's discontinuous at that point. Doesn't make sense to try and plug in a zero there. If you were trying to say what it's going toward from the negative direction, you could say uh, veering toward approaching negative infinity from the positive side, approaching positive infinity, but just in general, discontinuous there. And so these shapes secretly have a relationship to why dividing by zero isn't allowed in most typical forms of arithmetic. And there are other types of doing math that try and make one divided by zero be something you can do, but you often sacrifice other cool principles of arithmetic that you're very used to to make those other ones fit in. So you can't have everything at once. You can't have all the rules you're used to and be able to divide by zero because all these graphs have a discontinuous point right there. It's sort of like the mirror between some of their symmetries. Now, I like plotting interesting points like this, and when I was trying to plot some of these, I decided to take this one level further, which most of this will be in a full episode I'll make about this topic. But what I wanted to try real quick was seeing if I plot not only where a number itself lands on playing that game, but where all of its factors land. All of the points that land on an exact coordinate point, this time going back to dots, but that are any of the factors of 12. Like if we made our first web, which had 1 times 12, 1 times 12 times 1, and we got our um, 2s and 6s, 2 and 6s, and we got our 3s and 4s. And we also would have a negative version, but for now let's stick with the positive one and know that it would be mirrored and reflected over there. And then it's more generally talking about truly how many factors the number has and stuff like that. Now, what if I used this factor detector, saying that it has 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12 as its factors, and then I tried to find all the appearances of the coordinate points that multiplied to any of those, sort of iterated this process in a weird way. Well, to find all the 6s, I also get the 6 times 1, 1 times 6 like ones, and I also get 2 times 3 and 3 times 2 to get my 6, and if I want to find all the 4s, I also get 4 times 1s and 1 times 4s, and I get my 2 times 2s. And if I want to find where all my 2s are, we get those. And if I want to find, we also get where my 3s are, and we also get where my 1 is. And we get a slightly more expansive web. And if you do this with a bigger number, you get a pretty cool whole cluster of a pattern. Like if you tried to do this with a factorial, for example, those would have a whole block at the beginning where it would fill out this arrow-like thing before spiraling out in a spiky way because it can't cross that line. 
all of it will be bounded by that line we were talking about or curve we were talking about earlier. But we get some extra stuff. So if any of you want to try making your own shapes to send my way of what bigger numbers would look like if we made the whole design there, uh, feel free to do that. And these definitely will show up in a future episode because just like the amount of dots being even or odd related to whether a number was a perfect square or not, well, believe it or not, and uh, with that, when I was saying amount of dots being odd to clarify, I meant just in that quadrant. Um, and similar to that, when I play this whole game, there's a relationship between whether the total amount of dots is three-vin or not, a multiple of three or not, and whether things are perfect cubes or not. So that'll be the topic of a full episode someday, but feel free to investigate in the meantime. Let me know if you draw any cool shapes. Thank you for stopping by for this bonus combo class lesson, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Make sure to check out all the combo class links that are in the description, like the cool Discord and subreddit and stuff. And for any of you who are extra awesome, the Patreon I started not long ago, which I am going to list all of the names of the current supporters in this description. So check this video description to see all of the cool names of the people who have been supporting so far. And if you want to help out too, check out that page. Thank you so much, and I will see you again soon.